This is Community Forum, a community service of CAN TV. I'm your host, Juan Carlos Hernandez. Our guests today are Eduardo Gonzalez and Carlos Orengo from Howard Brown Health Center, one of the largest organizations in the country to serve the LGBTQ community. They're here to talk about their work and some of the history of the center. Welcome to both of you. Thank you. Hi. Well, let's start off by talking about uh, you and uh, what you do at the organization and, and what brought you there. Uh, Carlos, please. Sure. So my name is Carlos Orengo, mm -hmm. and I am the manager of HIV STI walk-in services at Howard Brown. I've been there for about four years, mm -hmm. and uh, as manager, I manage pr individuals who are coming in for HIV STI services. Um, and we see a wide variety of clients who come in who might identify as female, male, trans, um, mm -hmm. and we offer a full panel of different preventative services. That's awesome. And, and what brought you uh, to the center? It was uh, something uh, I had been working in retail for more than 10 years, mm. and uh, I wanted something that was going to be a little bit more fulfilling. And with Howard Brown, it was everything that embodied who I am as a Latino gay man. I thought it was the best perfect fit for me. So when the opportunity arose to become a receptionist there, I jumped on it. And you just rose through the ranks? Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Great. And you, Eduardo, tell us about uh, what sure. you do and uh, what brought you to uh, Howard Brown, please. Sure. So um, my role at Howard Brown is as a manager of adult HIV services. Mm -hmm. um, with my team specifically, we help link individuals that are newly diagnosed with HIV. Um, and sometimes folks that have been diagnosed with HIV previously, they've either fallen out of care or sometimes you know, through their struggles, they've never engaged in care. And what my team does is help navigate those barriers to care and help engage them in care. Um, awesome. you know, Specifically, I can tell you one of our greatest examples is that I have a client that one of my staff has been working with mm -hmm. and they've been try trying to engage them in care for the past year and it wasn't until this year that after 12 months of trying we were actually able to bring this person back into care and I it's a rewarding experience to be able to manage the team that we have there at Howard Brown. It's wow. awesome. Wow. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. And uh, Tell me, uh, this question is for both of you. Uh, you guys can take sure. it and jump in and share as much as you can, yeah. uh, bounce off each other. Uh, tell me about the history of uh, Howard Brown Health Center. Yeah. And, uh, you also have a new CEO, mm -hmm. I understand. Tell me about that first and uh, get into some of the history, please. Sure. sure. So um, we, our newest CEO, is his name is David Ernesto Munar. Mm -hmm. um, he was the CEO of the AIDS Foundation of Chicago. He had been at AFC for a, a little bit over 20 years, if mm -hmm. I'm not mistaken. Wow. And he's an individual that brings so much knowledge and so much culture and so much um, motivation into the organization and fulfillment that we're looking for. He's truly indebted to the community and really works for making sure that the community is, is involved in the process. And um, we're looking forward to an amazing change, having David on board as our CEO, that's mm -hmm. for sure. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. And he obviously becomes part of a long history. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. yeah let's, let's talk about some of that history. It, this was born back in the 1970s. Mm -hmm. Correct. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was, you know, it was a small office space, realistically, and that just mm -hmm. started off with just a couple of individuals who were just trying to work with um, the LGBT community, you know, trying to bring a, a lot of the issues that we were having in the community to mm -hmm. the forefront. And uh, from there, it really grew, especially when HIV really began to consume our, you know, our community. Mm -hmm. So from there, we have really expanded our services, making sure that we're always on top of research, you know, such as like pre-exposure prophylaxis or mm -hmm. post-exposure prophylaxis, um, making sure that linkage to care happens, especially for individuals who are ne newly diagnosed, right. mm -hmm. making sure that we're able to really engage them and retain them, making mm -hmm. sure that they are taking care of their health. Great. It's, it seems to me from um, what I've read and from talking to you before the show that there's this spirit of, of service, but it's also like very on the ground service. Definitely. Uh, tell me about that. Uh, sure. How is that mm -hmm. spirit? Uh, it's obviously still alive. You're still around. But how, how are you seeing it uh, through the different programs sure. that you have at Howard Brown? Sure. I think one of the things that makes Howard Brown so unique is that it was literally created, you know, of the people, by the people, for the people. Mm -hmm. And I think that sense of camaraderie and that sense of unity and, and community is still around and we mm -hmm. see it through our leadership where, you know, we're constantly evolving our programs and looking at how we can make the most out of what we have to best mm -hmm. serve our clients. Mm -hmm. And I think our, our leadership definitely um, 
supports us and definitely acknowledges that we're doing an amazing job and from here we can only go up. Mm -hmm. um, and it's great to see our providers again like they're they themselves are members of the LGBT community and identify in so many amazing diverse ways that you really do get a <coughs> sense of change in the organization when you're there. I mean, mm -hmm. for example, one of the things that we're most proud to introduce um, is like modification in our registration forms and making sure that our patients that identify as trans individuals are really celebrated and, and that we see it in our documentation that it isn't something that's outside of the ordinary for us, we want to celebrate that individuality and make sure that right. it's, it's, you know, acknowledged. It's this inclusiveness, right? It's absolutely. It's bringing people in, whoever you are, you're, right. you're part of us. Right, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And uh, just in doing <laughs> some research, I was like, it was mind-boggling to, <laughs> to see everything and all the things you do. I'm like, how are we, I was thinking to myself, how are we going to focus this show? <laughs> because there's so much you do. Uh, but let's talk about some of those main services. Let's start for, by talking about the um, Broadway Youth Center. Sure. Uh, tell me what happens there, uh, how you bring youth in, uh, and uh, and what you provide them. Because that's, a, for a lot of uh, youth, I think, LGBTQ uh, uh, youth, it's, it's difficult. There are a lot of questions going on. There are changes mentally, physically, spiritually. Right. That, that we all go through as young people, and I'm sure they have their own assortment of questions. Yeah. So of course, yeah. Uh -huh. So the Broadway Youth Center, you know, has been around for quite some time, mm -hmm. and uh, we tend to see individuals who are under the age of 24 there, okay. and we offer a wide variety of services for them. So HIV, STI services, mm -hmm. um, we do offer resource advocacy, individuals who are coming in dealing with being homeless, mm -hmm. um, the stigma being surrounding just their sexuality, coming to terms with that. Um, so individuals who are might, might not be able to finish high school and might just need that extra push and support mm -hmm. and encouragement to get their GED. You know, mm -hmm. we're able to provide that. We're also able to provide laundry services, transportation, wow. that sort of thing. Um, we wanna make sure that they are being heard. You mm -hmm. know, a lot of times we, we try to have different forums, um, groups, drop-in hours for them to come in and be able to access these sort of services. So um, is there a housing component or anything like that? Unfortunately not. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. And I think, th you know, Carlos can agree, if, uh, there's definitely a need for housing in, our, in Chicagoland Absolutely. and I think across the United mm -hmm. States, especially mm -hmm. when you look at the disproportionate amounts of, of individuals that are homeless or transient that don't have access and are part of the LGBT community. Mm -hmm. It's really alarming, and I think that's something that the organization is saying, you know, we recognize it and we want to work towards being able to help in any way that we can. Okay. Um, go ahead. No, no. I'm no, uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're fine. You're fine. Uh, you remember, you're, you, you bring all the information for us. Uh, so do you have any examples or any stories you've heard at Howard Brown about uh, a youth that came to, to the center and was transformed? Um, maybe was afraid or had a lot of questions or was just going through a difficult time and they came through and they're they're leading a great life as everyone should definitely um d we have an example of a of a staff member actually who was mm -hmm. a participant of the broadway youth center okay. and through encouragement and support this individual she was able to transform her life and i think now having her on board having her started at the broadway youth center and transitioned into a staff position at the organization has been just amazing to see that that self growth and that ability to transform and evolve, you know, her own life. Mm -hmm. And she now serves as a role model to all of the individuals that might follow suit. It, it's mm -hmm. it's incredible to see, really. And, and I'm sure there are many stories like that that mm -hmm. um, that are documented in one way or another that you've helped and and that you've uh, brought forward into yeah. a, I guess a a full life, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. Okay, and um, who? Uh, comes in and supports the work at, at Broadway Youth Center because you. I, well, one thing I also thought when I was doing research is these guys are uh, like an octopus. They have <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're stretched out. You know, they have their arms everywhere, mm -hmm. which right. is, is it's it's a compliment really. It's, it's it speaks of your connection with people. Mm -hmm. So I think that what really uh, helps Howard Brown really uh, mm -hmm. achieve the things that we want to accomplish is mm -hmm. our volunteers. Volunteers. Our volunteers mm -hmm. are 
come from so many different paths in their own lives. Mm. You know, we have people who are VPs, we have people who are just from, you know, finishing up high school, whatever the case might be, and they are there to go mm -hmm. ahead and, and stuff condoms, um, make copies, uh, provide like check-in services. Um, we actually, for example, like one of our volunteers, Ed Howard Brown, he uh, started off as just a volunteer and then was offered a position to become our resource advocate. Mm -hmm. And uh, he is such a fantastic individual to work with. Wow. You know, a lot of the youth that come to see him at the Broadway Youth Center, mm -hmm. they, they just love him. He is just mm. full of energy and spirit and, he, his whole thing has always been, uh, if I can do it, you can do it. Mm. And I think that that is so encouraging for youth to see, uh, especially mm. as, you know, as minorities and whatnot, mm -hmm. we, we want to make sure that we are an example to say, hey, if we were able to succeed, you can as well. Let's right. do it together. Right, and, and Tony, I w did want to touch on uh, volunteering uh, later, but let's talk about it now. Sure, sure. Uh, if, let's say I'm a person, um, friend, family member, or somebody, uh, whatever, of somebody that's going to Howard Brown or not, or I'm just uh, really want to get my hands dirty and do something uh, for my community or in my community. Okay. What does it take to become a volunteer? So our process has been really simplified uh, thing, in large part thanks to our HR team. And mm -hmm. it's awesome because when a person is interested in volunteering for us at Howard Brown, what they can do is go directly to our website. Mm -hmm. um, there's a volunteer section that allows them to apply. and. The great thing is, is that we really take pride in being able to have staff that understand where our clients are at and making sure that we're protecting them at all times. Mm -hmm. So even our volunteers, you know, we ask them to complete a background check with us. We make sure that they're trained and onboarded properly okay. so that in the position that they w and they have options. There's different departments like you know at, at Howard. Mm -hmm. there's so <laughs> right. We have a myriad of programs myriad. and services. And it allows them to pick what they're interested in and, mm -hmm. you know, their service mm -hmm. or their skill sets. And we try to best match them with what they'd like, but oh my God, they're an amazing support. And it's awesome because it's online, they can apply directly and then can get connected to our services immediately. Is there an age limit? Like, do you have to be at a certain age? Um, or are you too young to volunteer there or too old? I think that we always want to represent the community as best as we can. Okay. So we encourage everyone to come in and volunteer, even if you're going to be stuffing condoms, it's something. Okay. I think that the age requirement is at least about like 18, okay. to be perfectly honest. Um, mm -hmm. Some of our venues, if we do have volunteers come and do even just processing your paperwork, might be at one of our bars or venues that we do testing at. Mm -hmm. And obviously we wanna make sure that we are working with the actual venue itself, and some of them you have to be 21 and older. Okay, okay. So, um, yeah, let's talk in, uh, well, we talked about uh, the Broadway uh, Youth Center. Sure. Let's talk about some of the other services uh, you provide. Uh, you just mentioned that you do testing mm -hmm. at bars. What is that a part of? What what arm is that part of sure. at, at Howard Brown? So we have, uh, as Eduardo mentioned, we have a wide variety of services as well as <laughs> departments. And uh, um, it's actually part of the HIV STI department, mm -hmm. which I'm a part of. Um, outreach, we offer services in the city. Mm -hmm. um, at different venues, um, such as Steamworks, mm -hmm. Brown Elephant on Clark Street in Andersonville, um, and several other locations. And we also offer services at different venues in the suburbs. Mm -hmm. So like in Berwyn, in Oak Park. Um, and the services that we offer through outreach would be um, HIV testing, rapid, as well as fourth generation testing. Um, syphilis, gonorrhea, chlamydia testing, mm -hmm. um, a throat swab, rectal mm -hmm. swab, mm -hmm. everything in order to make sure that individuals who are sexually active are getting tested and mm -hmm. treated if need be. And, and you said, mentioned one word, rapid? What rapid it? HIV test. Okay. Mm -hmm. How long, how, how, how is that done and how, what, what, what makes it rapid? Sure. So rapid HIV test mm -hmm. is checking for antibodies. Mm -hmm. And uh, for anyone who might have come and gotten tested, there's always that window period, which tends to be about like three months or so. Mm -hmm. um, from any sort of possible exposure to HIV. Mm -hmm. um, the sort of kits that we use, mm -hmm. um, the rapid HIV kit, mm -hmm. um, we test with blood. So it's okay. going to be a finger prick. Mm -hmm. um, and the individual who is getting tested would receive the results in about 20 minutes or so. During okay. that time period, we chat with them. We understand where their risk might be coming from, if they're having multiple partners, if there's any sort of um, drugs, anything mm -hmm. that we need to go ahead and take into, take into consideration. So you're making them aware of uh, where, they, um, where they're taking those risks and... 
coming up with a risk reduction plan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not judging the, the person. Oh, no, of course. Course. <laughs> One of the things that we're most proud of about all our programs and services is that it's, it, the premise is that we need to be client-centered and client-focused. So I think like programs that Carlos manages and, and our direct service programs across mm -hmm. the entire spectrum at Howard Brown, our intention is that we want to help empower our patients and really give them the strength and tools that they need to help evolve their own lives. and. It's focusing on what their strengths are, acknowledging where they could, you know, use a little bit of tweaking or a little bit of improvement, mm -hmm. and helping them get to those next steps. But it's it's a non-judgmental space. We want to assure that we we affirm who they are, mm -hmm. and we understand that, you know, behavior change is a process. We mm -hmm. you know, sometimes <laughs> it just doesn't happen overnight, and, right. and we get that, and we want to help nurture that and develop it so that our clients can get to a better place. But they don't. We don't want them to feel judged along mm -hmm. the way. Definitely not. Okay, and. Uh, Tell us now about the program you, you work with. Sure. Here, please. So um, Howard Brown has what's called a linkage to care department in our, mm -hmm. in our program. It, it helps filter clients into a larger, <laughs> the, our bigger picture at Howard mm -hmm. Brown. But primarily what it is is that when, when Car a patient might come into Howard Brown and be tested mm -hmm. through Carlos or his team, mm -hmm. um, and when we've identified that a person receives a preliminary reactive or that would be like the first, the first flag in saying that a person might be HIV positive, Mm -hmm. um, we allow them the opportunity to meet with one of my staff members and they're an amazing group of people that will help navigate that mm -hmm. conversation about what HIV is and how we can be treated, how, we can, how people can live healthily if they are positive. Mm -hmm. um, and my staff will help them connect to medical care. Okay. So Carlos and his team mm -hmm. will do prevention and testing and then once we've identified that a person might be positive, we help connect them to see their doctor. And mm -hmm. it's really a great process because excuse me, um, one of the national standards that we're up against is a White House standard that says that patients should be connected within three months. Mm. And we've created a program at Howard Brown that really connects our patients within about 72 hours. 72 hours. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and on our best day, we do it in eight. I mean, <laughs> wow, wow. It's, it's an impressive program. And as, you, and as you're saying, and it is, um, you're testifying really, it's patient-centered, it's person-centered. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Right. And uh, so are they connected to a doctor within the Howard Brown, uh, Brown Health Center? So we always want our patients mm -hmm. to know that they're empowered with the option to choose for themselves because that's that's mm -hmm. where it's going to start. So while we do encourage our patients, all of our providers at Howard Brown receive certification to be HIV specialists, which okay. is an amazing feature that we have for our providers. Definitely. Um, and patients, if they want to be connected to Howard Brown, we can schedule them right then and there. Mm -hmm. So if, let's say, for example, if a person were to receive a test result that's reactive, they can meet with my team, they can schedule their first appointment before they even leave the door, mm -hmm. um, which is a really, really mm -hmm. amazing process. And c can you tell me about uh, an example that, sure. uh, that you've, uh, with a person uh, that you've worked with? You don't, obviously you don't have to mention their name. Right. You could change anything <laughs> you want, but give us mm -hmm. an example of a person that came in and you helped along the way. And, and, and uh, I like these stories, and, and I'll ask about them, because they really, in, in some sense, put a, a a story behind the service, and that's what yeah. people want to hear. Absolutely. So tell us about that, please. Sure. So um, I think most recently, and what I love about Howard Brown mm -hmm. is that we really get to see the interconnectivity between all our departments. Mm -hmm. um, so we, had a, we have a team at Howard Brown that's our disease intervention team, and what they focus on is being able to uh, um, prevent and treat folks who might be diagnosed with syphilis or with um, communicable infections. Mm -hmm. And what, it, what we appreciated is that they were able to identify a person that was positive, connect them immediately to our team. Um, and when a person is first diagnosed with HIV, what happens is that we measure how much of the virus is currently in their blood system. Mm -hmm. And what we found is that this person had an elevated viral load. And our goal is that we want to make sure that we bring that number down to be able to help better manage their health. And connecting them to a provider and to one of my staff members, this person's numbers immediately changed once we placed them on medication. Mm. And it's, it's amazing to see when people come in and sometimes they're scared or apprehensive or they right. have a plethora of questions, which we completely get. Being able to work with them and nurture them and then seeing the end result once they've been connected mm. to care and they see the progression of how ha happy and healthy they are, that for us is a reward. Wow. Like it's, it's such an experience. Sounds like, sounds like a great reward, and well, we could certainly talk about a, a m <laughs> bunch of stories that way, but let's talk about some other uh, services you, you offer there. Uh, you also, Howard Brown also offers counseling, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We do. Mm -hmm. So we have, um, sorry, I don't know if you want to know. So we do offer mm -hmm. a wide variety and when it comes down to counseling. So one of the mm -hmm. things that we do offer is recovering with pride. So okay. for individuals who might be uh, 
coming down just from substance abuse. Mm -hmm. You know, we do mm -hmm. offer like an extensive uh, outpatient as well as inpatient. So for individuals who might just be coming in for one-on-one um, -on -one therapy, we do offer that mm -hmm. um, as well as more, a little bit more intensive in the sense of if they need to seek group therapy, mm -hmm. um, we would combine that with individual one-on-one -on -one therapy in order to make sure that we are meeting them um, wherever they're at, you know, it's right. always going to be client centered. So we want to make sure that they are feeling that they have the power to change their lives around. Uh, and, and there must be uh, any sort of addiction is difficult to deal with, right? Uh, and and for them to have that option at Howard Brown must must be amazing, right? Mm -hmm. and, um, and to have that um, support system. Uh, I mean, that's that's something just that I've been reading about recently, and, and, and because of some things in my family, I'm like, wow, this is awesome that Howard Brown helps provide uh, recovery for, mm -hmm. for individuals if they're seeking it. Now, um, you did talk about the uh, HIV and AIDS services uh, you provide, um, but you are, as I said earlier, you're connected to an amazing amount of groups mm -hmm. right. out in the community, uh, uh, especially. Uh, LGBT uh, community uh, communities and organizations of color. Uh, tell me about that and uh, who you branch out to, who you work with, and how they become part of the work that you do to make sure that people, if they need you, they know about you. Sure. Go ahead, uh, um, Gondo, please. Sure. So, for example, we have. Um, for our patients that are newly di diagnosed with mm -hmm. HIV, mm -hmm. separate from the linkage program, which mm -hmm. hel helps connect them to care, we also have an amazing, amazing case management team at Howard Brown. Mm -hmm. um, and our case managers, they're so, so well-versed in so okay. many different things, and they, they really help identify patients that might need short-term case management or long-term mm -hmm. interventions. Um, but from these case management programs, we've connected with our community partners like the Center on Halstead, the Chicago Department of Public Health that really help us identify clients that would benefit mm -hmm. and from these relationships that we're establishing out in the community um, we're connecting our patients directly to services okay so, for example one of the larger bodies in the, in the community that manages HIV services is the AIDS Foundation of Chicago which has an been an amazing community partner for us mm -hmm. as well to, to help navigate patients into care and th our different resources um, mm -hmm. But the great thing about Howard Brown is we're always thinking outside the box. Like, <laughs> we, like you said, we do have a few arms out mm -hmm. in the community, and we're thinking about how can we continue to expand? How can we continue to offer more services to the communities that are underserved? Um, one of the things that we've noticed recently is that, not too recently, but it's, it's a trending history in Chicago, is that access to services on the south side aren't always there. Mm -hmm. So we're expanding and being able to go into our suburban communities and say, these are the services you're looking for. Unfortunately, they're not here, but let's help get you connect it to Howard Brown because we offer them and we want to be that support. Awesome, awesome. Uh, we are, <laughs> amazingly, you know, the, the time flies and we are getting close to the end of the show, but uh, let's talk about the uh, the brown elephant uh, and how that yeah. works. So people are gonna be like, what's a brown elephant? <laughs> 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 but, uh, but tell me about that and uh, what it uh, helps provide for Howard Brown, please, and how people sure. can support those efforts. Yeah, of course. Yes. So there are three brown elephant locations, mm -hmm. one in Oak Park, okay. another one in Andersonville, right on Clark, mm -hmm. and the second one is right, the third one, I'm sorry, it's right on Halston and Lakeview. Okay. However, coming up shortly, um, in July, actually, mm -hmm. we're going to be moving to uh, 3020 North Lincoln. Okay. Um, the new space is just going to be fantastic. Just, it's huge. We're mm -hmm. going to be able to really promote like different things there. Um, but more to see. Mm -hmm. So uh, when it comes down to what the brown elephants are, it's a resale shop. Essentially. It's a resale shop. Okay. Yeah. So individuals um, from the community come donate items there, and we're able to uh, sell them in order to come up with the revenue in order to provide services to individuals who come in for linkage to care, right. for mm -hmm. um, medications, whatever the case might be, and they're able to get that back, essentially. Okay, so this is a way, a, a way to raise money, right? Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what if uh, I want to support uh, Brown Elephant, take some clothes, donate some furniture or other items, how do I go about doing Let's that? Let's sign you up. <laughs> 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 and the great thing about our brown elephant team is, I mean, 
like Carlos said, we have three locations right now, and what they're able to do is resell items back to the community. Mm -hmm. And whenever individuals or anyone in the community is interested in giving to How into the Brown Elephant, mm -hmm. we actually have um, Howard Brown, Brown Elephant trucks that can go to your to a local area in your community and actually pick up what you're what right. you'd like to donate. Mm -hmm. So there's the option of calling and scheduling a pickup or donating at any of our Brown Elephant resale shops. Okay. Um, and like Carlos said, the amazing thing is that. Because it's we're a nonprofit organization, the revenue that we help generate at the Brown Elephant goes right back into mm -hmm. our community programs and services. So, our clients are reaping the benefits in so many different ways. It's it's really awesome to see. Uh, and that's awesome to hear. But uh, one final question: What if I have a piece of junk furniture? Will, will you guys take that or? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what's cool about our Brown Elephant folks mm -hmm. is that they'll pick it up, and if it, they can fix it up, they fix it up, and if not, we help give it back to whoever could need it the most. Oh, great. Great. Well, we're out of time. Uh, thank you both for coming out to talk about uh, Howard Brown Health Center and all that uh, uh, small part of what you do. <laughs> we could go, go on for another two hours, I'm sure. <laughs> and to your audience, thank you for joining us. Community Forum is a community service of CAN TV. If your nonprofit organization would like to work with CAN TV, call 312 738 1400 and ask for nonprofit services. Tune into Community Forum for local issues and concerns every Saturday at 7.30 p.m. on CAN TV 21. I'm Juan Carlos Hernandez. Thank you for joining us.